Hare Krishna. So thank you for coming today evening and does any of you know what we are going to discuss today? The topic? Yes? Science, technology and more. And? And something I also. Yeah. Anyone else? Physiology. Sorry? Yeah, correct. What did you say? Physiology. Okay. Slightly different. Yes, psychology. <laughs> what are similar? Psychology, technology and spirituality. So science is psychology. That is correct. Thank you. So first I will speak about psychology. Then I'll speak about technology. And then I'll speak about spirituality. So if any time you have any question, just raise your hand and feel free to ask. So last year I was in California. Where is California? Yeah? Yeah, which part of America? East, West, North, South? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. West part of America. So there was at a, at a friend's house and we were sitting <coughs> and he had, a, he had a window, big window from which we could see the beautiful greenery. California is a very beautiful place. Nice mountains, greenery. And we were just looking at the greenery. And then we were uh, chatting. And then as I was looking at the greenery, I suddenly saw from the greenery a big ape appearing over there. Like the kind of ape you might see in the planet of the apes. Have you heard? This planet, a huge ape. And the ape started charging towards the window where we were staying and then the ape raised his arm and was about to smash the window as if to come inside. And as I was looking at that ape, I got alarmed. I looked at my friend and he was grinning. And I looked at him again and I saw there's something in his hand. And then I looked, it looked something like a remote. And then he pressed the remote and the ape disappeared. What happened? So, can you guess what had happened? Yeah? Hologram. Hologram. Okay, it's true. Uh, yes? Remote controlling. Yeah, remote controlling the image. So, what had happened? Yes? Fake ape. Fake ape. Yes, that is true. <laughs> so, yes? TV. That's clever. <laughs> That's, uh, so what happened was, he had a window like this, slightly bigger window, which you see behind. But this window, you can't see much through it. You can see through the window in that window. But he had made that window in such a special way that, it, that if you just press a button, the window would change into a TV screen. And once the window would change into a TV screen, yeah, you could see anything on that same, same glass. But the way he had done it was that just to have fun with people, he had made a short video clip with the same background as could be seen through the window. And on that, he had put an animated ape. So for somebody who would be observing, they would think there's a real ape coming in, about to smash the window and come inside. So, so, now I didn't know it was a TV. He knew it was a TV. So when the ape was coming in, I was alarmed. But he was simply grinning. Because he knew that the ape is a fake ape. It's not for real. So something similar happens to us. How? <clears throat> All of us are sitting here. And so there's a window over there. And beyond the window, there is the sky, there are some buildings, some houses, everything is there. So similarly, you could say our body is like our house. Now we are sitting here. We, we are souls who are sitting inside. And the mind is like the window. <coughs> so the mind is like the... So, so you are here, your mind is here, and the world is here. So now, when you look at someone, 
So you are looking at me right now and I am looking at you. So what is happening? Your, your, you, your mind and me. When all of us are in a straight line, that is when we can see something. So right now, if you start thinking of something else, okay, you know, I have got to do it. I want to watch this, I want to play this game, I want to watch this, I want to do that, I want to do that. And suddenly some thoughts start coming in your mind. And have you had this experience that you are talking with someone and that that person doesn't seem to be there. That person seems to be somewhere else. Have you had this experience? Yes. So then you tell them, earth to you, earth to you, come back now, don't go to another planet. Isn't it? Do you use this word, earth to you in Australia? Okay, earth to you. So, what has happened over there? Now, the, 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 in one sense, the body is still there. But the mind has gone off somewhere. If the mind goes off somewhere else, then we can't see anything. Although the eyes see, but we don't, we don't see anything. So, the mind is, is sometimes like a window, but sometimes it becomes like a TV. And when it becomes like a TV, it can start showing many different things on the TV. Sometimes this TV can show a horror movie. And the TV starts showing a horror movie. Okay, this happened and that happened and that happened and that happened. And, and this horror movie starts coming up. Then the person can become very fearful. Person can become completely terrified. So, now what happens? Do you know about phobias? What is a phobia? Yes? Sorry? Something you are scared of. Yes, that's true. A little bit more about it. Yes, you are scared of it. Like what did you say? Xenophobia. Xenophobia is what? Xenophobia means like the fear of being locked in small tight spaces. That is claustrophobia. Okay. Zeno is foreigners. So somebody whom you don't know, if you see someone else, hey, who is this? So xenophobia. So phobia is basically a fear, but it is something, you are scared of it, but it is something more. It is an irrational fear. It is, there is no logic, there is no reason for it. Mm -hmm. I was mm, with, I was in India just a month ago, 15 days ago and then I was talking with a, a devotee who is a psychiatrist and he was telling that he had a client and this is the, the woman, she was the wife, she had a phobia and her phobia was for germs. So they had such phobia for germs that whenever her husband would come back from office, she would first tell the husband, take a bath before coming inside. And, and she actually had to reconstruct the whole house so that near the door they had a bath. And whoever would come in the house, they say, first take a bath, then come in. And then after you take a bath also, what she would do is, he would take out his purse and then bathe the purse. And then she would take out every single item and bathe it. So how, I mean, we say, what is this? This is foolish. But what happens if somebody has a phobia like this, they can't help it. They just become completely fearful. They just completely fearful. So what happens? Now I said this is, our mind is like a window. And window should show us something else. But, for some people, when somebody has a phobia, at that time, the window suddenly changes into a TV and they start seeing a horror movie over there. And they can't stop it. So, it's not that they are foolish people, they are intelligent. But at that time, they are only seeing that horror movie. And when they see that horror movie, they just can't do anything. So imagine, say you and your friend are sitting, and your friend is very caught in watching a horror movie. And you are not so interested in horror movies. So, your friend is watching the horror movie and you are watching your friend. 
and then the friend, hey, ah! the friends are trembling, are shivering, are screaming. Hey, what? The thing is happening. But for that friend, everything is happening because the friend is caught in watching the horror movie. So something similar. Now phobia is where, like that that screen, which is there, it suddenly changes into a TV. And it starts, TV starts showing a horror movie and we don't even realize it. But for all of us, we may not have a phobia. But when we also become afraid of some things, at that time, the same thing happens. What happens? We see something or hear something and then suddenly, tuck, before we understand what is happening, the movie, the screen, on that inner screen, we start seeing a horror movie. The first time I gave a public talk about 25 years ago, 25, 30, when I was in college. I had given before also, but that was a major talk. And I had planned a seven minute speech. It was an elocution competition. What is elocution? Yes? Like it's kind of speaking. Yes, public speaking basically. Like the art of public speaking is elocution. So it's a location competition. And then, <coughs> when I was supposed to speak, <coughs> as I was just going towards the dais to speak, <coughs> something within me said, you are going to make a fool of yourself. Have some of you felt this? Something says, you know, you are going to make a mess. You are going to make a mistake. You are going to make a fool. Have you felt that sometimes? Yeah. Yes. So now I didn't know what that was. But that said that, and what happens for me, that whenever I am going to speak, if I am nervous, I start speaking fast. And the more nervous I become, the faster I become. So then I started, I got into the dais and I started speaking. And I started speaking, it was like a sudden, if you get into a plane, and with a plane without getting any warning, zoop starts off. Like it's thrown back. So it was like that. I just went there and started off. And I was speaking so fast that nobody could understand what I was speaking. And then generally if you are in a talk and you don't understand anything, then what do you start doing? Sleeping or yawning. Ah, they start looking at each other. You start looking at the watch. You start looking at the door. Basically, we start looking everywhere except the speaker. Isn't it? So now that started happening. And when that started happening, I became even more nervous. And I started speaking faster. And then more people started looking here and there, and my speed increased even faster. And a seven minute talk, I completed it in three minutes. <laughs> in three, three and a half minutes. And I didn't know what to speak. <laughs> Then I just tried to, any questions? Then one of them asked, why did you speak so fast? <laughs> so I said, if I had known I was speaking fast, I would not have spoken. <laughs> but that time it struck me that actually, you know, what had happened when that voice came, you are going to make a fool of yourself. I became nervous and in this inner screen, this Window, what happened? I don't think, oh, I'm like a fool, people laugh at me, nobody notice me. And as that movie started playing, I suddenly became very fearful. I became nervous, and because of that nervousness, I started doing everything worse. So, for all of us, when we experience fear, so at that time, the basically fear means that the mind is start showing is has started showing a horror movie and the more dangerous the horror movie the more fearful we become how many of you feel fear oh. okay some of you are fearless wonderful okay now when you feel fear is it a happy feeling it's not happy, isn't it? It's, it's, we don't want to be afraid. But if you fear, what will happen? What will happen? 
So, <coughs> many times our fears are more imagined than real. So like, in my case, it is not that I was going to make a fool of myself. But by imagining that I was going to make a fool, I have made a fool of myself. So, once, there was a woman who went to a doctor. She said, doctor, doctor, I have a big problem. This what? There is a frog inside my stomach. <laughs> what? He said, no, the frog is there inside my stomach. It is moving round and round and round. And it is putting me in a... It is causing me a lot of pain. The doctor said, a frog cannot stay inside your stomach. It, it will die. It cannot go inside also. No, no, I can feel it. It is there. No, please do something, doctor. And she was so mad with anxiety that she decided to... And the doctor said, okay, let's understand. And the doctor came to know that she has gone to 10 doctors before. And all the doctors had told her there is no frog there. So, she said, no, doctor, please do something. And the doctor realized that her mind believes that there is a frog. And just telling her there is no frog is not going to help. So, the doctor said, let's, okay, let's do some testing. And then he got some x-ray, some sonogram, sonograph, some, some scans done. And then he said, you know, you're right. There is actually a frog inside. Oh, thank you, doctor, for understanding me. He says, doctor said, now, now you know, we can, we will have to do a surgery to remove the frog. Either we can do it now or we can do it after one week. Now do it now. So, okay, the doctor said, okay, then I'll give you anesthesia. What is anesthesia? Yes? Yes, it makes us some unconscious. Thank you. So, when we get unconscious, then even if our body is cut, we don't feel the pain. We become desensitized. So, then the doctor gave her anesthesia and just gave her a small cuts on their belly. And then after a few hours, she came back to consciousness. In the meanwhile, the doctor told the nurse, go to a nearby pond and get a frog from there. And then he brought the frog. And when this uh, woman came back to consciousness, he told her, See, you were right. We found this frog in your stomach. She ordered the frog. He said, oh, thank you, God, doctor. You saved my life now. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. I'm relieved. And then... She went away happy. And the doctor and nurses thought, hey, that is a good solution. Now she is free from anxiety. And they were happy. But after one week, that woman came back in great anxiety. Doctor, doctor, help me. Says, what happened? He said, the frog had babies. <laughs> And the babies are where? In my stomach. So you have to remove the babies. <laughs> so, so, when the mind imagines something, at that time what happens? Even if there is no reality, the mind keeps believing it. That's why I said many of our fears are more imagined than real. We imagine this fear, this may happen, this may happen, this may happen. And actually, in real life, things are not that bad. You know, sometimes we take loan, and then what we have to pay? Interest on that loan. You know about this? So if you have taken a loan, then we have to pay interest. But suppose somebody comes to you and tells you, you have to pay interest on this loan. And you say, I have not taken this loan. Nobody had to pay interest. Why should I pay? I am not going to pay. Nobody had to pay. See, if I have not taken the loan, why should I pay the interest? No, you have to pay the interest. And if somebody says, okay, okay, if you are saying I will pay. You say, what oh, foolish. You have not taken the loan, why should you pay the interest? If you have not bought something, why should you pay the money for it? So fear is like that. There is no problem, there is no loan taken. But we keep paying interest, we keep worrying about it.
Yes? Um, but what if some situations are actually real? Because suppose, like you said, someone's going to do a surgery, they're afraid about the pain, or like the cutting stomach because they don't like it. So that is a real fear. How is that imagined? Okay, very good question. So if, if when the fear is real, say if somebody is afraid of the pain, then how is that an imagined fear? Actually, when we say that most of our fears are more imagined than real, that doesn't mean the whole fear is imagined. See, there is something that is painful. But around that pain, a whole story is created. So what happens, say sometimes, have, sometimes we may have to take an injection, we have to take a dose. Now, the dose is to be taken and it's, it's, do you enjoy taking injection? Nobody enjoys it. So at that time, it's a, a pin is, go, a needle is going, going to go into our body, it's painful. But what happens when that needle is going to go into our body, our mind starts imagining. Oh, it's going to be terrible, blood is going to come out, my body is going to, uh, my eye is going to be a hole in my skin, and I'm going to cry, and there's going to be so much pain. Now, actually speaking, the injection is just small hole for a moment, and it comes out. So the pain is little, but the imagination makes it very big. So there are two, there was one situation, the examples I gave was, where there was no fear, but actually there's nothing to be afraid of, but the person imagined everything. The other is where there is something to be afraid of, but still the imagination makes it much worse. Just like say, if somebody is speaking in public, there will be a little fear. Will I forget everything? Will I... <clears throat> what if people don't understand, people don't appreciate what I am saying? Little fear is good. But if I start imagining, oh, that actually people will throw eggs at me, people will laugh at me, People will, people will run me, knock me, will drive me away from the stage. And that is all imagination. That's not likely to happen. So there is fear. There is real cause of fear. And there is a whole imagination <coughs> associated with fear. You know, you may have some friends who like to tell stories. If some small thing happens to it, then they will exaggerate it. Do you have any friend like that? They take a small thing and make it very big. Oh, they are okay. <laughs> they are experts to thank you. They are expert storytellers. So after some, so you there, you know. Actually, today I went to school and I there I met this terrible person and he was like this and he did like that. Oh really? This happened to you? <coughs> and then what happens? So, so these people, they just make a big story when nothing has happened. So, this to, after some time, what happens? If we repeatedly hear some stories which are exaggerated. You know what is exaggeration? Exaggerate. Yes, what is exaggerate? Yes, we make a small thing very big. We exaggerate things. So, if somebody slips and falls down and they get a scratch and they say, actually, you know, uh, so this person came and pushed me and I fell down and there was a big bar and the bar was about to cut me but I jumped, I moved aside and the bar just cut my skin and this person was so terrible, he pushed me again and he wanted to, no, none of that has happened. <laughs> so, all that is exaggeration to make a small thing very big. So, our mind often exaggerates the problem. There is a problem and we should be afraid of it. But when the mind exaggerates the problem, then we just can't deal with it. So the mind, what it does, it makes, it imagines fears or it sometimes makes small fears very big. And that's how we sometimes end up uh, not responding properly. Because we're just seeing this movie and this movie, and what happened, what happened, what happened? What happened? We get carried away by the movie and we don't respond properly to reality. Okay. So this was the first point about what was the point I'm talking about? Psychology. How our mind affects us. So any other questions about this?
Okay, so now I'll speak the second point about technology. What is technology? Yes. Okay, this one. What is technology? Devices. Devices. Yes, that is good. What do the devices do? Yes. Okay, make games. Yes, that's one thing. That's two. Yes. They. Addicted. Now, can you repeat? I can't hear you. Okay, you get addicted to stuff on the devices. Yes, that's interesting. At your age, at your age, I did not know what addicted meant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> so yes. So basically, <coughs> devices, what they do is, they help us to do things which we normally could not do. Say like, now some of you have glasses. Now, if without the glasses, I cannot see very well. The glass is a device. It helps me to see better. So similarly, a phone is a device. So if I want to talk with you, I can just directly talk with you. But if I want to talk with somebody far away, the phone helps me to talk. So technology helps us to do things which we normally can't do. If I want to go from here to home, I have a car. If I want to walk, it may take an hour for you to go. Your car in five ten minutes you can go. So technology enables us to do things which we normally can't do. Which, but what tech? So technology all not only helps us to do things, but technology also does things to us. Technology does things to us. What that means is that when we start using technology. Say if you start using a phone or iPad, we start playing some video game or watching some movie or say as you grow older, you may go on social media uh, and then you start chatting with friends and then you may get so caught in that. So what is happening? Somebody is playing a video game. There was a boy in Thailand and <clears throat> this boy started playing a video game. And he got so caught in, he was staying in a hostel like place. It was like, it was all, he had one room to himself, it's another friend was in another room nearby. So he was playing, and he, it was vacations. He got so caught in playing, at half hour, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, eight hours, ten hours. He kept playing for 71 hours. And he got so caught in playing, initially he had some food which he ate, after he forgot to eat, he forgot to drink, he forgot to sleep. And then eventually because of that continuous playing, 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 he just got so overworked, so exhausted that he got, he got a stroke and fainted. Bang! He fell on the ground. He didn't realize it at all. Fortunately, his friend was nearby and his friend came running and then rushed him to a hospital. And he survived. So you see, who can play for 71 hours? But what happened is that he had nothing else to do. It was vacation, so he didn't have any, any, any school to go to. Nothing else to do. He just kept playing, kept playing, kept playing, kept playing. So <coughs> what happens? Now normally we may play, but who will play for 71 hours? So technology can push us, uh, as a technology can help us to do things which we can't normally do. But technology also does things to us which we normally wouldn't do. Now you said about getting, do we get addicted to devices, isn't it? So this is a good example of getting so addicted 
and the person forgets to eat, forgets to sleep, forgets everything. Except that thing. Sorry? Except doing what he's doing. Except doing what he's doing. Yeah. Yes, he's so caught in doing it. He just doesn't realize, press this button, press this button, press this button, press this button. So I have a friend uh, in, <clears throat> in a very big university in America, in Massachusetts. It's one of the biggest universities. So there, they work on responsive technology. That means that when you press a button, then if any video game they make, what happens is you press a button and then some options come up. You do this or do this or do this. So they do psychological study to find out how your mind can get caught the most. And that's how one, two, three, four, just get caught so much. So I'm talking about technology in relationship with psychology. Say so suppose now this floor, is this floor flat or is it sliding? What do you think? The floor? It's flat. It's flat. Okay. Good. Now suppose the floor were sliding like this. Okay. And then say from your bottle, some water falls down. Then what would happen? This is your bottle. Okay, your bottle. Okay. So if water falls down and the floor is sliding, what will happen? The water will go to the um, bottom of the slope. Yeah, yeah. So water will go to the bottom of the slope. And now if you say, no, 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 I don't want the water to go there. Now just you are not wanting, will it stop the water? You say, no, I'll put my hands over there. I'll not let the water go. But how much can you block it? The lot of water will keep going. So when the floor becomes inclined in a particular way, the water will naturally go in that direction. Even if you don't want it to go, it will go. Isn't it? So similarly, for all of us, if we consider our mind to be like the floor and then our thoughts are like the water falling on it. So what happens for all of us, our floor, of our mind's floor is inclined in particular ways. So, so if somebody is very hooked to video games, somebody is very addicted to Facebook, Somebody is very addicted to, to movies. Somebody is very addicted to sports, whatever it is. Then, as soon as they have nothing to do, their thoughts will start going in that direction. <coughs> and when the thoughts start going in that direction, they get caught in that. They just get caught. They don't even realize, but they get caught. So if the floor is inclined this way and the water is flowing this way, if you don't want the water to flow in that direction, what should we do? So put your leg in the water and let it go in the other direction. Put your? Leg in the water. Like, the water. Put your leg in the water. And then, yeah. And the push it in the other direction. Yeah, like. Yeah. Okay. Go like that and then it'll go that way. Go that way, yes. Put your leg in the push With the leg, push the water. That's a good solution. Yes? Get a cloth and soak it up. Get a cloth and soak it up. There's too much water to soak it in the cloth? Uh, get a big cloth. Okay. <laughs> get a towel. Get a towel. Okay. Good. So if the water is there, then we'll have to do something about it. It won't go away on its own. Hmm? So what happens? See, some people, based on how their psychology is, they will always think in particular ways. And I think in that way, they just can't think in another way. So, <clears throat> how many of you know about the Mahabharata? Okay, everyone knows about the Mahabharata. Very good. So now in the Mahabharata, um, who are the Pandavas? Five Pandavas, anyone know the names? Yes? <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, the five Pandavas. And who is the villain? Duryodhan, yes. So, what happened? Uh, that how many days of the Kurukshetra war? 18 days. 18 days, yes. Yes, 18 days. 
18 was the last day, 17 plus 1. Hmm. So now, on the 13th day, the Kauravas, they came together and they made a plan, they formed a particular formation in the military. And they trapped one Pandava warrior. Who was that? Yes? Abhimanyu. Yes. And Abhimanyu was whose son? Arjuna's son. Excellent. Oh, you know the Mahabharata very well. Good. So then anyway, the next day, Arjun got very angry. Arjun said, what will I do? Yeah. Yes, but next day in how much time? Before sunset. Yes, before sunset. Thank you. So what happened? And then Arjun started fighting. And then Arjun entered into the Kaura ranks. And that day they had made the military formation in such a way that they put Jayadrath right at the back. And there was 20 males of army in between. 20 males. And the army was 20 miles long and 2 miles broad. So Arjun entered into it, just broke through and just was charging, 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 chasing after. So as he kept going one after another after another. So now the Kauravas had not expected, Arjun. they knew Arjuna was going to attack. But Arjuna attacked so fiercely that nobody could stop him. And then... Duryodhan got worried and at that time who was the commander of the Kaurava army? Bhishma, yes. Bhishma was the first commander. For From day 1 to day 10 Bhishma was there and on day 10 Bhishma fell. Then from day 11 to day 15 who was the commander? Dronacharya, yes. Karana was after Drona. From day 16 and to day 17 he was Karana. So Duryodhana went to Drona and he said, Oh Acharya, please help us. This Arjun is actually destroying our whole army. He will please stop. So Drona said, actually, the Pandavas have thought their strategy very well. They have all our warriors are either fighting with the Pandava warriors or they are placed at various places to protect Jayadrath. She says, I want to be right here next to Jayadrath. I can't go and fight with Arjun right now. But there is one warrior who can go and fight. There is one warrior who is not doing anything right now. Who is that? He says, Duryodhana asked. He said, who is that? He said, it's you, Duryodhana. <laughs> now, Duryodhana said, Oh, Acharya, you know, I might be able to fight the whole army. But I can't, I can't fight Arjun. And certainly not Arjun in this mood. He's mad with anger. So at that time, Drona said, Don't worry. We won't offer you as a sacrificial lamb to Arjun. I have a plan. He said, I have got an armor. What is the armor? Yes? Protective thing that the warriors wear while fighting. Yes, it's a protective covering which it takes in the blows of arrows or weapons. So he says, I'll put you on, put on a special war armor on you. And that armor, even nobody will be able to penetrate. And with that armor, you can hold Arjuna back. And Duryodhana became very happy. And he had also heard Drona had such an armor, it was a Celestial armor, special armor. And it was an armor which was not easily visible. So then, suddenly as Arjuna was penetrating the core of ranks, suddenly Duryodhana came over there. A path, where are you going? Fight with me. And both Arjuna and Krishna were surprised to see Duryodhana standing there so fearlessly. So Krishna said to Arjuna, Arjun, I think you can finish the war today itself. <laughs> How finish the war? Yes. Yeah, Duryodhana is the villain. If he is brought down, then the war is over. So then Arjun said, Arjun, look, Arjun was also surprised. Duryodhana said, Oh, Arjun, are you afraid of me? You are so proud of your power. 
He said, I will crush you today. And then for, show your might and I will crush you after that. And Arjun started shooting, started shooting arrows. And <coughs> normally when the enemy would shoot arrows, the warriors would do three things. One is either they would, the charioteer would move the chariot aside so that they would dodge the arrow. Or they would shoot their own arrow and counter that arrow. So both the arrows would collide in midair. Or the third would be that they would let the arrow hit them but if the, their armor would protect them. So depending on how they were fighting, they would use any of these three strategies. So in this case, Duryodhana kept shooting at Arjun and whichever arrows were coming, just let them hit Arjun. Ah, so he let them hit himself. And the arrows came and hit and nothing happened. And Arjun shot one, two, three and all the arrows just fell off. And Duryodhan said, what happened Arjun? You think you are so powerful? I will destroy you now. And he started shooting arrows. And Arjun was countering his arrows. And Krishna told him, Arjun, what happened? Have you long, are you out of form today? What happened? And then Arjun started thinking. And now Arjun was whose student? Uh, so Arjun was also expert. Arjun immediately recognized. He said, how can my arrows not hurt him? He said, I think Drona has given his armor to him. And that's why my arrows, which can break boulders apart, break brick stones apart, they are rendered harmless. But, he says, still I know. Although he has this armor, still I will humble him now. Now what had happened? This armor was such that it covered the whole body of Duryodhana. But only thing was that, if like say if you are wearing gloves, the gloves sometimes they may cover the whole arm or sometimes the gloves may cover the hand but the fingertips, if you want to hold some things, the fingertips might be open. So this armor was such that the fingertips were not protected by the armor. And nobody knew that, only Arjun knew that. And even Duryodhana did not do that. So Duryodhana was just brazenly just fight shooting arrows and come on Arjuna, what can you do? And Arjun took careful aim. Tuck, 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 tuck. He shot 10 arrows. And the 10 arrows went into tuck, tuck, tuck. where? 10 fingers. Ten fingers. Ah! Duryodhana said screaming over there. And screaming, he dropped his bow and arrow. And as he was screaming like that, Krishna and Arjun started laughing. And laughing, just bypassed him and rushed by. <coughs> and Duryodhan's chariot turned around and they tried to pull out the arrows one by one by one. By that time, Krishna had gone straight ahead. So, uh, yes? So, actually, did Duryodhan actually know that the fingertips were not protected and give them to Duryodhan on purpose? No, no. <coughs> it was that was just a limit that was a limitation of that armor but unless the opponent knew that limitation there would not be any danger normally you will shoot at the if an arrow is, enemy is going to shoot they will shoot at the chest they will shoot at the neck nobody is going to shoot at the tip of the fingers so that was a vulnerability so in general in the material world no plan is foolproof you know what is foolproof Yes, no plan is such that you can have no, no holes in it. It is just that we try to cover up the major holes. And we hope that others don't know the small holes that are there. That's how we work. So, so Arjun went forward charging. And then as Arjun went inside, Yudhishthira started thinking. Yesterday, Abhimanyu went into the enemy Kaurav formation and Abhimanyu got trapped. And today, Arjun went there. What if Arjun gets trapped? So he turned around and he said, whom to send? So there was Arjuna's friend and student named Satyaki. He told Satyaki, today is the opportunity for you to repay your debt to your teacher. Please go and assist him. And Satyaki was very eager. And Satyaki charged in. Arjuna had created a trail of devastation and he had gone by. 
and Satyaki went rapidly towards him. And then after Satyaki went in, Satyaki was also quite young. And when Vishnu became worried, Satyaki is like Abhimanyu. And what is Satyaki is not able to reach Abhimanyu Arjun, instead he gets trapped. He turned around, whom to send? And there was one per there's one person in the Mahabharata who is always itching to fight. Who is that? Bhima, yes. He looked at Bhima and Bhima was just longing. When? Now Bhima had been told specifically to be by Yudhishthir because Drona had made a promise to, uh, to Duryodhan on the first day when Drona became the commander. Initially, everybody had thought that Karna will become the commander because Duryodhan loved Karana very much. So then, but when Drona became the commander, Drona was very pleased. And he said, I want to give, offer you some boon. What can I give you? So he said, please arrest Yudhishthir. Alive and bring him alive before me. So Drona was amazed. He said, oh, Yudhishthir is such a, such a great soul. He has no enemies. And even you do not want Yudhishthir to be killed. You want Yudhishthir to be brought alive? So, Duryodhan said that after 10 days of seeing how the Pandavas are fighting, I have understood that we can't win this war. So my plan is, if you arrest Yudhishthir and bring him before me, I will challenge him for another gambling match. And again, I will send him 13 years into the forest. Drona said, you will never learn. So what had happened? There was this fear. Yes? Okay. 13 or 14. In the Ramayana, it is 14 years. The Pandavas, the, the Lord Ram had to go to the forest for 14 years. In the Mahabharata, it is 12 plus 1. 12 years in the forest, <coughs> 1 year in hiding, incognito. 13 years. Okay. So, anyway... <coughs> So Drona had tried, but 11th, 12th day he could not succeed. 13th day also he had tried. His hope was to trap Yudhishthir, but they trapped Abhimanyu. So there was a fear that they might attack Yudhishthir, Drona might attack Yudhishthir and capture him. That's why Bhima was there to guard. But what happens when you're just a bodyguard of someone, you're a guard of someone, and if there is no attack, then there is no action. So Bhima was getting bored over there. Nothing to do. So then, Bhima looked, Yudhishthir looked at Bhima and he said, Can you go to help Arjun? Now Bhima thought about it. And he looked around there, the Dhrishtadyum and others were there. He said, you protect Yudhishthir. And they said, because Arjuna was going towards Karna, Arjuna was going towards Jayadrath, so Drona would probably be caught over there. Drona will not come over here. And Bhima also charged in. And as Bhima charged in, what happened? Bhima... Uh, First, Arjuna had gone in and then Satyaki came behind him and Bhima came after him. Now, when Arjuna alone was there, he was unstoppable. Uh, but slightly the Kauravas were fighting. But by the time Bhima reached Arjun, and the Kauravas saw both of them together, the Kaurava soldiers started just running away. And when the Kaurava soldiers started running away, the Kauravas, Duryodhan's brothers, they said, Where are you running? Don't be cowards. Come and fight. I'll lead you. And Bhima was so eager. Bhima had taken a vow. What was the vow of Bhima? There are hundred. How many Kauravas were there? Hundred. And they had all been a part of the of the group that had insulted Draupadi. So he said, "I'll finish off all of you." And on that day, one after another, after another, it was like within a couple of hours, Bhima finished off twenty-five Kauravas. And Duryodhan got the news. He said, what is this? He said, it seems Arjun alone is destroying my whole army. And Bhima alone is destroying all my brothers. <laughs> that today the whole war will end. And I was thinking in gloom. He, said, he thought that today we will stop Arjun. And Arjun will enter into fire and we will win. He just took his head and started sinking. How is this happening? What can I do? Who can ever stop such people? 
just thinking there's no way to stop. He's becoming gloom. As he became gloomy, he looked around, and the sun was moving towards the horizon. Sun was setting. As sun was setting, suddenly a thought came in his mind. Hey, he was thinking, how is it that this Arjun and Krishna, Arjun and Bhima, just destroy my whole army? Now the sages and Bhishma they told him repeatedly that actually Krishna is God. So he said, maybe Krishna is really God. And if it's God, then what is the use of fighting against him? He became more depressed. As he looked up and still he saw the sun sinking towards the horizon, and he said, "Hey, if Krishna is God." And Krishna loves Arjun, and Arjun loved Abhimanyu. So, and I was able to kill Abhimanyu. And because I was able to kill Abhimanyu, therefore Krishna is not God. What is logic? Krishna loved Abhimanyu, Arjun, Arjun loved Abhimanyu. So if Krishna had been God, Krishna would have protected Abhimanyu. And because I was able to kill Abhimanyu, therefore. Therefore, what? Krishna is not God. And just this thought came in his mind, and he jumped up. Come on, we'll stop them. He said, "Yesterday, <coughs> we had got when Abhimanyu had been attacked. How many warriors were there? <coughs> yes, in between both. Six. Six. Yes, six warriors had attacked. He said, 'Today, we'll have eight warriors attacking.' So he said, 'Drona and Kripa, you attack from you.'" Attack Arjun from the front, and he said, <coughs> "Shalya and Shakuni, you attack from the right." And he said, "Karana and Ashwatthama, you attack from the left." And turned to Dushasan, he said, "I and Dushasan will attack from behind." He chose on the behind, so no danger for him. His fingers were still burning with the wounds. <laughs> <coughs> so they all suddenly attacked Arjun. Arjun was fighting. And suddenly, the arrows started coming from all sides, and it was like a cloud of arrows that darkened the sky around him. Arjun was spinning around in his chariot, shooting arrows, trying to fight back, fight back, fight back, fight back. And he was barely able to hold his own. Arrows were coming from all directions. Arjun was shooting, shooting, shooting. His Arjun was so fast that nobody could see when he put his hand, when he took out an arrow, when he shot an arrow, took out a bow, shot an arrow. Tuck, tuck. His bow was. Like twisted into a circle, it's just going around. But despite all the shooting of arrows, Arjun was just barely able to hold on. He couldn't move forward at all. And as he couldn't move forward at all, he started despairing. He, was, he had seen Jayadrath's chariot. He could see it. It covered forty miles. But now he couldn't even move forward. It was so close, yet so far. So he said, "What to do?" And he started despairing. He could see the sun going down towards the horizon. And suddenly, Krishna realized that my devotee is in danger. Arjun started becoming despairing, becoming fearful. How can I reach? And then, when a devotee becomes fearful, Krishna comes to help. So what did Krishna do? Krishna called the Sudarshan Chakra, and a celestial disc. It just came in a, at that time. It just came in a small form. It just released it, and it went up, and it covered the sun. It covered the sun, and to people over there who knew, who knew what was happening, they thought it was an eclipse that had come. At that time, a solar eclipse. Now, of course, the warriors were not aware of this. Warriors are completely busy in fighting. Now, if you are fighting with someone, you don't see there's a star over there or a moon over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, if somebody beats us, then you may see stars, <laughs> but that's inside our head. <laughs> but so, what happened? They were fighting, and suddenly, the sun got covered, and everything seemed to become dark. And when everything became dark. The Pandavas, the Kauravas started celebrating. 
Yes, Arjun is defeated. Arjun is going to die now. And then Jayadrat was hiding behind. He came for Arjun, you are going to kill me? Now I will light the fire for you. And they all started mocking and jeering at Arjun. And Arjun speaking fearful, he put aside his put his bow down. But disappointed. As he was putting his bow down, Krishna told him, Arjun, there is still time. Just put the Brahmastra on your arrow. Now, there is a, there are times when no questions should be asked. <laughs> so, <coughs> Arjun didn't ask, what? The son has said, how can I fight? So now, Krishna must be having something in mind. He took the, oh, put the Brahmastra. I told him, point it at Jayadrat's head in such a way that Jaidrat's head will not fall immediately on the ground. It will fly straight away and near the in the mountain there is his father Rudakshatra who is performing penance. And there let the arrow fall on his lap. So let the head fall on his lap. I took the bow and he shot. And as Arjuna was about to shoot he placed the arrow and he was about to shoot. Krishna removed the Sudarshan Chakra. And Krishna told Arjun, there is the sun and there is Jayadrat. Shoot! And Jayadrat was laughing and uh, suddenly he froze in the laughter. He saw the sun and he saw the arrow and before he could do anything, tack, the arrow just cut off his head. The Kauravas were all watching and they were celebrating. And I suddenly stop. What happened? It's right in front of their eyes. His head got lopped off. It's like if a cricket match is going on and a bowler bowls a ball and there is such a fast ball that the bells get knocked out. And not only they get knocked out, they just get, fly out of the stadium. <laughs> And the opposing team's coach is there. The bales go and fall on the opposing team's coach's lap. <laughs> so now Rudhakshatra, he had got a benediction. He wanted to protect his son. He had got a boon. That anybody who causes my son's head to fall on the ground, that person's head will crack apart. Now, yeah, <laughs> good. <coughs> So now Arjun did not know about this, but Krishna knew about it. So Krishna told him, shoot the arrow in such a way that the head will go and fall on Rudhakshatra's lap. So it fell on Rudhakshatra's lap and it fell there. Then Rudhakshatra was meditating. And when you have closed eyes, suddenly you feel tuck, something falling on your head. He looked and he saw a blood head. What is this? He couldn't even recognize it's his own son's head. Immediately, just push it aside. And as it pushed, it fell on the ground. So, he caused it to fall on the ground. And what happened? Boom! <laughs> his own head exploded. And in that way, his boon caused his own death. <laughs> yes? But didn't Arjun, wasn't Arjun the one who shot the arrow and caused the head to fall? So, if he is... Yeah. But, but see, as I said, every boon, it has a loophole. So when you ask for boons, you have to ask for very careful words. So he thought, you know, whoever kills my son, he will cause the head to fall on the ground. But, like, you know, that's, you know Hiranyakashipu Narasimha story. Hiranyakashipu was thinking, if I ask inside the house, outside the house, in the day, in the night, I will not be killed. So what happened? Because then the and, and the threshold. So what happens when people ask for blessings like this, they get caught in the words. So he asked anybody who caused my son's head to fall on the ground. So he himself became the cause. And that's how his boon worked against him. And then the Panda was celebrated. So then Duryodhana thought, what happened? I thought I had won and I lost. So he was completely dev devastated by that. Anyway, I told this story for a particular point. That point is, 
that when we experience fear or negativity or distress, Krishna is there to help us. Just like Arjun tried his best and then Krishna helped Arjun. So similarly, for so I talked about tech, I was talking about technology. In technology, just like we have some technology that enables us to do some things which we can't do. We can talk with someone. Arjun also had technology, arrows by which you could shoot and send people's head far away. But Arjun had not just technology, he had spirituality. Spirituality means he had Krishna with him. And because he had Krishna, he was protected. So now for all of us, I will conclude with one last point. So, <clears throat> what is the spelling of fear? Yes. Yes. F E A R. Yes, F E A R. There are four letters over here. So, my last point has four points in it based on acronym fear. So, when we feel fear, you may feel fear of the dark, you may feel fear of strangers. I feel fear of failing in an exam. I feel fear of losing something. Whenever we feel any fear, at that time, we can use this four points. F-E-A-R. F is focus. Focus means, like you mentioned this point, sometimes there's a real problem. And then, but we imagine. Focus means, we start feeling fearful. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if that happens? So focus means what is the exact problem right now? Say if you are preparing for an exam and then you find that, oh no, what if I don't do well in this exam? What is the exact problem right now? Focus. Then E is engage. Engage means what can I do about this right now? A is arise. Arise means understand that you are above your fears. You are a soul. You are a part of Krishna. And R is release. Release means let go. There are some things in your control, some things not in your control. So let go of that which is not in your control. So I'll give, tell one story about uh, how I unwittingly applied this in my life. And you can think about how you could apply this four points. Uh, so, and about two years ago, when I had gone to America, I went from India. I had gone to, um, I went to America, and then as I was entering into America, I had to catch another flight from there to go to another city. There's a connecting flight. And when I came in through the security, uh, suddenly I heard a loud noise. And before I could understand what happened, there were seven, eight American security guards pointing their guns at me. I said, what happened? He said that when your crutches, you know, I use these crutches for walking. So, he says when your crutches pass through our security machine, we got a high explosive alert. So, he said we have to frisk you fully and the security guard came and he said, look at the crutches. What is there in these crutches? He said, what is there? Crutch is a crutch. Nothing is there. He said, no, there's high explosive over here. So he said that we'll have to break this crutch. I said, if you break the crutch, how will I walk? He said, that's not my problem. I said, what do you mean? He says, no, we have to protect America. That's fine. There's nothing in the crutch. He said, no, no, there's high explosive alert. So then as I was talking, you know, initially, I was just surprised when I heard this big noise. Then when I said, I have got nothing, why are you troubling me like this? I was annoyed. But then, as I said, we will break the crutches, I started becoming alarmed. And I was thinking, actually I had another flight to catch and this would get delayed. And I would not be able to catch that flight. Not able to reach, I was getting alarmed. And then suddenly, now I didn't consciously think about this, but somehow it worked out like that. So I said, if I get if these people, if I don't catch the flight, I have a program over there, my business program, I don't know how many hours I have to spend over here. He said, that you focus. Okay, what is the problem now? What is the problem? I just 
Okay, the problem is that these people suspect that there is a, something in the crutches. So as I was talking, as I was thinking, as I was praying a little bit, what happened basically, I like to recite Bhagavad Gita verses. So there is one, I was reciting some verses of the Bhagavad Gita, so I came to a verse in the 18th chapter. I was reciting in my mind at the time. Not that I was talking and loudly reciting, not like that. <laughs> I was reciting in my mind. So there is the 18th chapter of the Krishna says, Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam, Ruddeshe Arjuna Tishtati, Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani, Yantra Rudhani Mayaya. It says that we are all wandering in this world and Krishna is guiding our wanderings. So as I started reciting these words, it suddenly struck me that actually I have travelled across so many countries, caught so many flights and there could have been so many times things could have gone wrong. But through all of them, Krishna has protected me. Krishna has made sure that I reached wherever I wanted to, where I needed to. So, I just thought like this. I started feeling calm. I'm feeling calm. I started feeling calm. I think, what, what can I do, Krishna? Whatever you want. Released. And then there's another security person. Probably the security in charge's boss, he came over there. What's going on over here? He said, he said he spoke something to them. Then this person looked at me. I looked at this person. Then the said, okay, you go, I'll take care of this. And then he said, what is there in this uh, crutches? He said, I said, nothing is there. And he looked at it, he picked it up, he says, can we open it? And then I said, yeah. He said, I told you in the screws and I told him, this is a collapsible one. So you can open it also. He said, if you can open it, there's no need to break it. And they started opening it. And then he opened it and he looked inside it. He said, I can see something dark inside it. So he took out the low, upper part and lower part. Lower part he was looking. Upper part was fine, nothing inside. Lower part he was looking, he can see something dark. And then he got some, some sort of prong and he put it inside, pulling out something. He said, what is this? He told him, what does it look like? He picked it up and spelled it. Hmm? He said, I said, just pull out one more, pull out something more. I said, what is this? <coughs> I said, it is dirt. Still put it further inside. I look at it. So what it hurts. So what had happened before I had gone, where is my crutch? Where are my crutches? Okay, here. So before I had gone to America, I had gone to Rindavan. So in Vrindavan, I had gone by the Jamuna. And Jamuna is quite muddy over there. So, at the bottom of my crutches, there are these, there is crutch tips, they call it. These are made of rubber and sometimes they get worn out. And when they get worn out, we need to replace them. But before they are replaced, if they are worn out, you walk with them for some time. So, what had happened? My crutch tips had got worn out and the dust of Rindavan, the dirt of Rindavan had gone inside the crutches. And near the Yamuna, Yamuna is very polluted because of a lot of pollutions. So, so that the sedimented dirt, the sedimented soil next to Rindavan, it had high metallic content in it. So the dirt which was there in my crutches was actually the mud from Rindavan. So it is the dust of Rindavan. So the dust of Rindavan is actually spiritually very powerful. So their machine found it like an explosive. <laughs> So then he took out a little more of that and then he said, look at it once again, smelled it and he said, you know, cleaning your crutches is not my beauty. <laughs> he fixed the crutches and he said, you can go now, clean your crutches afterwards. And then I went away after that. So uh, at that time, basically what happened was <coughs> the fear was there, but because I was able to think of Krishna. That helped me to rise. Okay, there's no need to get so worried. Krishna will protect me. And focus, engage, arise, release, it all happened automatically. So for all of us, if we face some fear in our life, then, you now sometimes our fear may come from our situation, like you said, sometimes it may just come from imagination completely. But wherever the fear comes from, if we take shelter of Krishna, if you remember Krishna, Krishna will give you the guidance by which you can overcome the fear. 
so that way whatever we need to do we can do effectively if we turn towards krishna so i'll summarize i spoke on three points what are the first what is the first point psychology so psychology i talked about understanding the mind the mind is like a window which turns into a tv and it starts showing us a horror movie which makes us fearful i gave different examples of that ape appearing on the window apparently or of this what are this woman's problem this is the frog inside my belly <coughs> so like that we all may have our fears some people have phobia that means they see something and immediately the horror movie starts off they just can't do anything about it <coughs> so we need to stop the horror movie from starting and if you can understand the horror movie starting then you stop watching it then also we can protect ourselves so so how do we deal with fear for that i talk about i talk about technology in technology i give the example that how technology enables us to do things we can't do like say talk with people far away but technology also does to us things which we normally not do that is say somebody kept playing video games for 71 years and fainted because of a attack afterwards so now we all can get so captivated by technology that we may get completely lost so that's where we come to spirituality so when i i give the example that when we keep doing something repeatedly then our thoughts keep going in that direction if somebody uses when he plays video games too much he just think about video game constantly just like duryodhan i told the whole story of duryodhan and uh, trying to stop jayadrath and failing so duryodhan always thought that you know krishna is not god and i'm going to win even when he was being back defeated it seems some more thought krishna is not god but krishna was really god and krishna backfired duryodhan and ensured that arjun became victorious and then lastly for just as krishna helped arjun krishna can help us also whenever we face fear and to deal with fear i talk about acronym fear what is the acronym fear f was focus you know whenever you feel afraid whenever the it start become like a tv show or a horror movie so what is the exact problem okay there's nothing really happening then e was engage okay what can i do about it right now okay and this may happen like okay this person wants to what is the exact problem they are one day want to they have found something in my crutches what can i do about it okay help them help them open the crutches arise okay actually i am not just in the situation i am a soul who is part of krishna and reunions krishna has taken care of me so many times in the past krishna will take care of me now also in this way when we work then we can break we can overcome fear so by praying to krishna by chanting hari krishna you will find that whenever fear comes in your life you can overcome fear by focusing engaging arising and releasing thank you very much hare krishna so any questions yes So how come Abhimanyu died? Like, and, and like, why did Krishna let Abhimanyu die? Okay, good question. Why did Krishna let Abhimanyu die? Krishna doesn't promise that bad things won't happen in this world. What Krishna promises is that actually through the bad things, He will make sure that good will come out. So the nature of the world is sometimes bad things will happen. and sometimes krishna protects directly sometimes krishna protects indirectly so although arjun although abhimanyu did die but abhimanyu died remembering arjun abhimanyu died remembering krishna abhimanyu died while fighting a hero's hero's battle and because of that he was elevated he was liberated so in that sense at a spiritual level he did get krishna's protection so sometimes the protection may come at the material level sometimes it may not come at the material level but if somebody is serving krishna and surely at the spiritual level they are protected because duryodhan did not understand the spiritual level so he thought as abhimanyu had not been protected abhimanyu had been killed and that's how his reasoning went wrong okay thank you yes
when Arjun um, was um, trying to defend himself by shooting all the arrows like round round, how did he like quiver not run out of arrows? Oh, okay, good question. How did Arjun's quiver not run out of arrows? Actually, Arjuna had been given a blessing that when he had got the his chariot, Agni had given him the chariot, and Agni had given him a blessing that his quiver would be inexhaustible. So even inexhaustible. That means even if it got exhausted, it would get replenished. So as soon as it would finished, nobody had to replenish it. It would get it would always stay full. That was a special blessing he had got. Good question. Thank you. Any other questions? How does yes. he know which Sorry? How does he know which arrow? Oh, okay. So, how does he know which arrow to get out? Actually, they had... Uh, you see, the arrows were carried not only in the quivers. The arrows were also placed at other places. So, in case the quiver something happens, the other arrows are also over there. But when we talk about Brahmastra, you have to understand that it is not necessarily a, just a special arrow. It is a special arrow, but the real Astra is not just the arrow. It is the chanting of the mantras. So, the Astra is not just the physical weapon. The Astra is actually the power that is put in that weapon by the chanting of the mantras. So they would take a shining arrow. So you would take a good sharp arrow. But the chanting of the mantra would invest that arrow with the power of the Brahmastra. Sure. So that's why when later on, if you remember Karana, when he had to fight, he wanted to he wanted to get the Varga Astra. But he just couldn't remember the mantra. And that's why he couldn't get the arrow itself. So the arrow is not just dependent, the astra is not dependent on the physical arrow alone. Sometimes there might be a special arrow also, which they might keep at a separate place, or sometimes a special arrow might appear only when they will, they will meditate on the mantra, the arrow itself will appear in their hands. But the important thing is that it's not the physical device, it's the mantra that is chanted that makes it special. Okay? Yes. So like they just take a normal uh, arrow and then make it into Brahmastra. There are the three different ways are there, I say. If you could take a normal arrow, they could have a special arrow, and by the chanting of the mantra itself, an arrow might appear. So all three are possible. Thank you. Yes? You had a question? Okay. Anyone else? Yes. But how is the arrow formed? How does he, how does he pick the, how does he pick the arrow when he was turning? How does he pick the arrow? He keep on returning and he shoot him. How does he, he need time to pick the arrow and put it on the board and shoot? Oh, how does he get the time to pick the arrow? That's the expertise. That's the speed. Just like say sometimes, if you have a, if you have seen some quiz contests, there are rapid fire quizzes. Now, in rapid fire quizzes, what happens? One, two, three, four, five questions come up. Isn't it? So, you want to ask rapid fire questions? <laughs> okay, good. So, so, similar, so, but now somebody who doesn't have that knowledge, I think, how can you answer questions so fast? But the person is so expert that they can answer questions very fast. So like that, the warrior, expert warriors are trained in rapid fighting. So, tuck, 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 just quickly take out the arrow. They're so fast that it's you know, blinding speed. That's what is required. That's what is meant of expertise. So expert is not just shooting arrows, but also in speed with which they take out the arrows. Yes? What if um, he's taking out the arrow, then the arrow becomes all around, which is what did they shoot? Yes, that's possible. But Arjun also had an invincible armor. So because Arjun had an invincible armor, so he would not get damaged. And if an arrow would be damaged, he would take out another arrow. And what if he, he doesn't know which way, he gets confused in which side the quiver is. <laughs> he's an expert or he doesn't remember he doesn't he'll never get confused about such things he'll not get confused he has lots of arrows and he will use it he's, 
shot thousands and thousands and thousands of arrows. Somebody who's expert, they can actually do such a thing even while sleeping. Hmm? Yes. How do you practice the practice? I practice. I practice. I practice. But I repeated practice. Yes? Um, when you say, they always say that take your time and actually, like, because if I say like a mantra, it doesn't really have that, uh, it's not good. So, how does he say the Brahmastra mantra very slowly? Get the arrow, like, uh, not having much shoot him. No, at that time, these are mantras which they are expert at chanting. See, for all of us, do we speak in Sanskrit? <coughs> no. So then for us to chant Sanskrit mantra is very difficult. But if you have to speak an English phrase, it's not very difficult, isn't it? So because that's a normal language for us. So for them, Sanskrit was a normal language. Chanting mantra also would not take that time for them. See, if we recite the Bhagavad Gita, it'll take us, if you recite all the 700 verses, usually it takes us one and a half, two, three hours. But Arjuna, Arjuna and Krishna, their whole dialogue happened within one, pra, uh, within one hour. Because they are speaking. Sanskrit is a normal language. So, thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki. Gaur Premande.